Commons family, I have a few announcements for us today. First of all, this coming Tuesday, Charlie's going to be doing the Q live on our Instagram and Facebook, and that's going to be at 8 p.m. on Tuesday. So make sure you tune in for an open time of questions and discussion over Instagram and Facebook live this Tuesday night. Also, this Friday is our fill the truck that we've been doing every other Friday. We're going to be collecting food and supplies for local undocumented families that are in need. So anything you can help donate to that would be amazing. Amazing. We're going to be outside of our office from noon to one this Friday collecting items or you can also just make a financial donation on our website or through our Venmo. We would love to see you. Please reach out if noon to one is not a good time but you would like to donate something. We would love to find another way to connect with you so reach out if you're interested in that. Lastly, Christmas Eve is coming up and we're really excited about our Christmas Eve service. So keep in the loop about our plans with that. We're gathering our details for time and location, but we're really excited to gather for a drive up in-person service. We're gonna be socially distanced in our car, but we have all the details coming for you about that next week. Thanks so much. Happy Sunday, Commons family, and welcome to our Advent week number three. I wanted to just briefly uh, share a video from the office here. It actually is Sunday today, and uh, I wanted to show you that we have our Advent candles lit, uh, three of them, looking forward to next week, and then lighting the Christ candle together at the Christmas Eve service, as Greta mentioned in the announcements. But today, I'm not going to give a message. We're going to share, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we shared a short part of a clip from a group called The Work of the People with a lot of different kind of like-minded theologians uh, called Adventists, and we just showed part of that clip. Today I want to show the ending part of that clip. It's only about, I think, 14 minutes long, something like that. And it's some of the greatest uh, thinkers alive today and leaders, and I really like what they had to say about the Advent season. So I hope you enjoy it this third Sunday of Advent. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next Sunday. We take all the, all the stuff of, of human birth and act like none of that could have possibly been present in, at Jesus' birth. And therefore we then make this sterile savior that none of us can aspire to, yet, we also talk about Jesus being fully human and fully divine. And I think what we do unconsciously often, if not regularly, is we focus on the fully divine part and forget to take into account the fully human part. I'm interested in the fully human part. You know, what is it that made Jesus so, as we say in our old neighborhood, so full of himself, so present in who he was and what he emerges over time, what his mission is to be in life. The, the image I'm trying to conjure is a person who was deeply, deeply aware, to, aware of his humanity. Um, in ways that we tend to walk away from as human beings. We, you know, we dress ourselves up, we make ourselves up, we eat too much or not enough. Um, we do all sorts of things that um, in some ways deny our bodies and the importance of our health. Now, and I think about that a lot as I'm trying harder and harder to be that person that's more embodied and more aware of my health and my mortality and the fact that I've got fewer years in front of me than behind me. So how, how do I make the most of this, this body I've been given that I may not have taken the best care of over the years? And not only is that a selfish question for me, but what does that mean as a gift to other people? It's so crazy that God would not spare God's self the indignity of something like hiccups. 
or having a pancreas, right? I mean, there's like this fact that God became flesh, like this stuff, the stuff that disappoints us all the time, you know, that sort of gets in the way and um, isn't like we think it should be and ages and um, gets fat and stops producing insulin, right? I mean, the, the ways in which our physical bodies can so um, fumble and disappoint us. And, and yet, this is what God chose to have. That's incredible to me. And I, what does that then mean that we have a human body, that this is, this is the God chose to make God's home within flesh? What does that mean for the fact that I have a human body? And then what does that mean for how much concern I might have for how any human body is treated or trafficked or abused, right? So this, this means something profound to humanity that God chose to walk among us in flesh. That is powerful to me. Jesus mm -hmm. makes complete sense to me. Why? <laughs> because this is my whole thing. I believe God is love. It's that simple and that complicated. And so if you tried to express love to human beings and just came down and said, I am love, love each other. We automatically, because we're so afraid of hard things, we would automatically go to like unicorns and rainbows. And so you would have to send someone to show what love in the flesh looks like. God became human. And so the way, the way the human is addressed is cannot be indifferent for us Christians because we have uh, the Son of God made flesh among us, you know, made one of us, as Paul says in, in the Philippians, you know, made just one of us, one among us, you know, and one without any kind of glory or without any kind of uh, mysterious power, you know, but just one of us with tremendous care for the others. You know? God is seeking to become God in us, which is a way of looking at, you might say, even the incarnation itself. Jesus, in a sense, awakens the human consciousness now to something that's alive in our midst, a new way of being. You would have to send, what does love look like? And so, otherwise, we would romanticize it. We would turn it, we would, we would make it easy. Because that's who we are as people. We're gonna make it easy. And so, then Jesus comes and says, okay, I, I am love. I sit with the people you're not allowed to talk to. I do all the hard things. I make all the hard choices. I love the people that are unlovable. I feed the people who are not supposed to be taken care of. Um, I don't tolerate shame. I don't tolerate attacks. Like I'm love and it's hard and messy and dirty. And if you really love, I mean fierce, big love, you'll become dangerous to people. And so there's no way that most of us could have understood what love was without seeing what love looked like. So to me, it makes perfect sense. And so God is love and Jesus is what love looks like made flesh. And it's hard and it's not the default and it has nothing to do with rainbows and unicorns. This stuff don't make sense all the time. And 
When it don't make sense, man, it's, it's hard to believe in the midst of something that don't make sense. But then I get to the other side of the, the, uh, the challenge or the paradox, and I'm saying, man, I'm glad God is real. I tell people all the time, it's, it's, it's to society's benefit that Jesus exists, because without Jesus, um, I can't honestly say that I'd be a really good guy. You know, I'm a leader either way. Uh, I'm a lead in either direction. Uh, what Jesus did was gave me a, uh, a good reason to lead towards good. And uh, that's why I'm glad he was born. Um, and somebody introduced me to him. Because without him, there's a good possibility I'm leading in the opposite direction. That means everybody would have been in trouble. So I do think, though, we have to um, awaken to the fact that what we already are looking for is already arrived. Uh, it's already here. Uh, and I think we need to, to get out of our unconscious state uh, and get into a new level of awareness and attentiveness. Um, and I also think that Advent points us to a God of the future. Right, a God who will always be more than anything we are. So as we awaken to a new being in, in Christ, then we are to become something more in that being in, in Christ. And so Advent is kind of the, kind of the sign that says onward, you know? Uh, the coming to means a moving toward that, okay, you know, great, we've awakened to, now we get up from where we are and move toward. We can't stay where we are, right? Uh, and so uh, that moving toward is what Christmas is about, right? That birthing of Jesus then now is, we are the Christ. Hey, this is the good news, right? Let's awaken to what God is doing in us and what God is seeking to become in us. So I think the gift giving is great. You know, we all love new sweaters and new slippers, but there's something much deeper here that we have to wake up to from our deep slumber, our almost comatose state that we find ourselves in, thanks to the consumer and advertising business, you know, that keeps us nice and lulled <laughs> in, in the dark. Uh, the admonition in the New Testament is not pray, but pray and watch. Pray and watch. Uh, so you must pray with open ears, uh, open ears uh, and open eyes to watch uh, the signs of Christ's coming. And what should we look for? Uh, not of uh, catastrophes. Mm. I find, I found uh, sometimes in the south of the United States, uh, Christ is coming, expect earthquakes, diseases, etc. No, <laughs> uh, I expect miracles, the miracles of the kingdom. Maybe if we're going to move into a new Advent season, maybe we would do well to start with O Sapiencia, Sabiduria in Spanish. The welcoming of a bigger mind. The wisdom mind is a bigger mind than the rational mind. Now we religious people, we're supposed to be experts at that, but we pretty much settle for information, not transformation. So if Christ is going to come, as Christ forever is, into the world and into our lives, maybe the whole year should be Advent. What would a miracle look like? Uh, the unexpected. Uh, if you don't expect the unexpected, you will not find it. Uh, we don't expect the miracles, and therefore we don't see them. They are all around us.
I don't know that we can really love others until we've figured out how to truly love ourselves. I think loving ourselves is the hardest thing we do as human beings. And loving ourselves does not mean indulging in everything we possibly can acquire in life. Loving ourselves is having the good sense of knowing that we need to step back and step into a deeper relationship with God, with the Holy, with the Divine. The Christmas story for me is a constant reminder that the calling is really to be born and born and reborn again and again and again in my own in the shape of my own true self. A baby is very vulnerable. A baby needs nurturing and tending. Uh, that's also true of whatever part of me it is that wants to now come out of hiding, that wants to be embodied and incarnate in the world. And I need that unconditional love to provide that, that nurturing and tending. Que detuvo mi caída libre, creo. 